Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be walking you through how to set up call tracking in Google Ads, both tracking call extensions, meaning calls made directly from the ad extension on your Google ad, and of course, people who call you directly through your website, meaning they go to your website or your landing page and they click that call now button. So first things first, go ahead and make sure you are in the conversion goal section of Google. If you don't know how to get there, just go to this goals tab here and then click summary. Now I'm in an account that is actively running and has conversions mostly already set up. I went ahead and did this the other night, but I'm just gonna proceed as if nothing in here is set up, okay? So just ignore what you're seeing in this account. And I will say for some of your accounts, you may already actually see a calls from ads set up here. It may just say calls from ads and it may be like a default Google hosted conversion goal. We're gonna override that and create our own to start just because it's a lot easier and it is just kind of good to get in the practice and habit of setting these up. Okay, so go ahead and click create conversion action and we're gonna set up our first conversion goal for phone call tracking. Click phone calls. And now Google's gonna give you three options. For this one, we're gonna be tracking calls from ads using the extension or call only ads. Go ahead and click continue. This one's really easy because there are gonna be no tracking or I guess code installation set up, but this is also the most basic form of tracking a extension call. So go ahead and give it a name. Some people call it calls from ads. I like to call it extension calls. They're the exact same thing though. The name really doesn't matter, but I would name it extension calls. As for value, don't give it a value. We aren't tracking revenue or anything with this. As for count, just give it a count of one, meaning only track unique callers, right? We don't wanna track the same person who has called three times as three separate phone calls. Now for call length, you can set this to whatever you want. Traditionally, I like to do like 20 seconds. Um, this basically just means that the, here you go, right here. This is the minimum length a call needs to last to count it as a conversion. So some people do it as a qualified lead, meaning they'll make it so the call has to be 120 seconds. I don't like that. I like to count every single call we generate just so we know. And then later we can assess which calls are good and bad. So you could do one second, you could do 30 seconds, you could do whatever. For this example, I'll just go ahead and do 15 seconds. Now everything else here, we leave the same. We don't need to change this. Um, if yours looks different than this, just go ahead and make it so it's the same as this, but that's really all we do here. Now just go ahead and click create and continue. Okay, great. Now we've set up the call extension conversion goal. Now we wanna set up tracking for website calls. So same thing, go ahead and click create conversion action. Click phone calls once again. And for this one, we are clicking calls to a phone number on your website. This third one here that says mobile website, you probably won't ever use. This is if you have some sort of more advanced tracking or you have separate phone numbers and use for different um, breakpoints on mobile versus desktop devices. Most of you won't need to worry about that. So we're only going to use this one here, which is calls to a phone number on your website. Click continue. Once again, let's give it a name. I just like to name it website calls, right? Keep it simple, self-explanatory. For value, again, we're not going to assign it a value and we're also gonna keep the count as one. Now for this, this is where you paste in the phone number that is hard coded on your website. Again, for some of you, you may be using different call tracking platforms, you may be dynamically swapping numbers, but for 90% of you, your business phone number or just your cell number is probably the number that's hard coded on your, on your website, right? So go ahead and paste that here. I'm just gonna paste an example one. Um, and then again, for display number, Assuming that the same phone number is the one hard coded on your website, just go ahead and paste it twice. So for 90% of you, you're just gonna paste the phone number on your website here twice. That's all you're doing. And then for call length, you're gonna do the exact same thing we talked about previously. You can set it to whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 15 seconds. And then once that's done, go ahead and click create and continue. Now Google's gonna wanna ask you, how do you wanna set up your tag? We're gonna go ahead and install the tag ourselves because it is super, super simple. Go ahead and click install it yourself. And now it's gonna show you all these little complicated things, but I promise you it's super simple. There are gonna be two separate code snippets here. You have this first one here. This is known as the global site tag. And then we have this one here, which is the phone snippet. Now you're gonna need access to the back end of your website to go ahead and do this. If you have a web developer or a web guy, you can just send him these instructions but I'm gonna go ahead and go to the back end of my client's WordPress and show you how we do it. All right, so this is the back end of one of our WordPress admins. My client uses Elementor, so we're going to use the Elementor custom code, or we can use a plugin down here. 
Um, some of you may use Elementor where it allows you to paste in custom code snippets. Some of you using WordPress can also just download this plugin called Code Snippets. Um, it's free. If you're using any other platform that isn't WordPress, Elementor, most of them all allow you to do this. Either it be Squarespace, Wix, Webflow, you can always add custom code. So for now, go ahead and navigate to the plugin or the section where you insert code to your website. So here we are under code snippets. I'm going to the header and footer, and we're going to install the code snippet in what's called the header, or as you can see here, it says to install it in the site-wide head, right? So that means you want to install it site-wide in the header of your website. I'm going to go ahead and copy this, and then I'm going to paste it right here. I'm going to do the exact same thing for that second snippet. Scroll down. I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to paste it directly underneath it. So in your website header, or your site-wide head as it's called, you should have your tag and your snippet right here. So it should look like this. Both of these should just be stacked right on top of each other and pasted right in here. And once that's done, go ahead and click save changes or publish changes to your website. Great. Now that that's done, you can go ahead and continue and you've successfully not only set up website call tracking, but you've also installed the global tag site-wide in your website, which is going to allow us to do some other things. Now, before we sign off and just confirm that our call tracking is working, there's a couple quick things we want to adjust. Back in the conversion goal settings, go right here under conversions and click the settings button. A lot of you are going to have these default settings on that we're going to want to adjust or enable ourselves. So right here for call conversion action, this is the default conversion goal Google uses to track extension calls. Well, we just set up our own together, so we're going to change this to the goal we just set up. So click this drop down and then click the goal we just set up together. Um, for me, it's called call extension. That's the one I created. Go ahead and hit save. Now, where you see enhanced conversions for leads, we just installed that Google tag on the website, which is, allows us to enable this. Go ahead and click turn on enhanced conversions for leads. Select the option Google tag because that's what we installed. If you've installed your Google tag properly and then a couple minutes or maybe an hour have gone by and it's synced, it should look like this to verify that it was properly installed. Go ahead and save that. Then last but not least for call tracking, under the account settings, which can be found under admin and then account settings, ensure you have call reporting turned on and then ensure you have also enabled this right here that says call and messaging terms. This allows you or allows Google to track calls. Without this, calls will not be tracked and conversions will not be recorded for those calls from ads or those calls from your ad extensions. And that's really all that it is for setting up call tracking. It's super simple. So now let's go ahead and move on to setting up tracking forms. All right, now that we've set up call tracking, we're going to go ahead and set up form tracking. There are a few different ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you the simplest way and the way we do it for 90% of our clients. And now that we've already installed the Google tag on your website, it should be super simple and take less than a couple minutes. Go ahead and click create conversion action. And then this time we're gonna select website. Now go ahead and paste in the domain of your website or your client's website that you just installed that global tag on and click scan. Google's gonna detect that tag and make things a lot simpler for us. So let's just go ahead and give it a minute. Once it's detected, you should see this little pop-up or setup genie appear, which is going to make things so much simpler. Now, before we do anything here, I'm gonna explain how we like to set up form tracking. On all of our landing pages or client websites, we set up what's called thank you pages. All this is, is simply just a page for thank you that the user gets redirected to upon submitting the form. So if you were to submit a form on this client's website or any of our websites, they're gonna get redirected to a thank you page. All we do is we track that thank you page in Google, basically tracking page views, which tells Google and tells us every time we have a form submit. So if you don't already have a thank you page on your website, I highly recommend you create a thank you page, and then you're gonna to wanna to update your existing forms to redirect to that page. I'm in the back end of my client's website right now, just to show you, this is on Elementor through WordPress, and if you can see when I'm editing the form, here on the left-hand side, if you scroll down, and we go to redirect or actions after submit, you can see I'm telling the instance of the website to redirect the user, and then I chose the setting right here. This is their thank you page, meaning whenever this form is submitted, the user who submitted that form is going to be redirected to the thank you page, and we're gonna track that here in Google. So let's go back to Google now and set that up. So once you've set up your thank you page and you've redirected your form to so that thank you page upon submission, right under conversion goal, just select submit lead form, now for event type, ensure you click page load. 
A lot of people click form submission thinking that, well, you know, I'm tracking a form submission, so I should set that up. But no, we are actually tracking technically a page load here, right? So ensure that your conversion goal is submit lead form and that your event type is page load. Now, don't put anything here yet. Just go ahead and click see more settings so we can go ahead and edit the advanced stuff. Submit lead form, that's good, right? That's proper. Now for this right here, this is what we wanna make sure we do properly. For when it says match when, we're gonna change this to URL contains, and then we're going to put that ending slug of the URL, which for me and most of you is just going to be thank you, or whatever the ending is, right? Some of it may be confirmation, or maybe it's success, but this is just the slug from the URL, from the thank you page. And basically what this is telling Google is that this conversion will fire whenever someone lands on a URL on this domain that contains thank you or whatever your um, URL slug is. And then we can just scroll through and we can go ahead and select the same settings that we set up for the other call tracking, right? We don't wanna use a value. We're only gonna count one conversion. And then we scroll down. For these, I like to change these to 30. It just basically um, extends the conversion attribution window. Nothing to worry about. Just go ahead and set them to 30. And then when you're done, go ahead and click done. Scroll down and we can skip right past this and click save and continue. And because we've already set up the Google tag, this will automatically start firing and working. And just like that, now you're done. We have both our submit lead form conversion goal set up, which fires when someone lands on our thank you page. We have our call extension conversion goal set up and we have our calls from website conversion goal set up. So we are all good. And now you're probably ready to take your campaign live now that you have proper conversion tracking set up.